Hi, my name is Dana Pierce and you're joining me at the Food Processing Development Center for a high pressure processing demonstration. Please come over this way with me and we'll start. We've removed the doors from the machine just so you can see the inner operations of the machines. The canisters were pushed into the pressure vessel which is right here. This is considered the loading position. The vessel will then move into the working position. Currently the pressure vessel is in the loading position. Once the product is loaded, it will move into the working position. So now that the pressure vessel is in place, we'll take a step back and look at the entire piece of equipment. So we've got three main components, the first being the pressure vessel, which we've seen here. The second being the yoke, and the yoke is this thick piece of metal that surrounds the entire pressure vessel all the way around. It's been constructed so that it can withstand over 4,000 tons of pressure. This is important because the third component I'm going to talk about, which is on either side, is here, and on the other end are the plugs. Those go into place as the vessel is filling with water, and then behind the plugs come in a locking mechanism, and then the yoke holds those plugs into place so when the pressure increases that's what's holding the water and allowing for the high pressure to be established within the pressure vessel. As the plugs are moving into the vessel this is what holds the water in. The vessel will start to fill with water. Once the plugs are in place the wedge will move into place and what this creates is the plug and the wedge push against the yoke and the yoke holds all of these these components in place and allows for the pressure vessel to reach that ultimate pressure of 87,000 PSI. At this point, the wedge will move out of place and then the plugs will move out of place. Once the plugs start moving, that's when the loud noise occurs. Water will start to gush out of the pressure vessel. At this time, we don't have product in here. And then, once the water is drained, the vessel will move from the working position into the unloading position. Now that the vessel is in place, it is ready to be loaded with the next batch, and the three canisters from the new batch will push the old canisters out, and they are ready to be dried and packaged. The product has been unloaded from the machine, and now we put it through its downstream processing. The conveyor works to shake off some of the excess moisture and also gives us an opportunity to separate out the product. From that point, it moves onto a drying rack. On the drying rack, there are three air blades that help to remove the moisture from the packaging. Once it goes through this drying, it is ready for final packaging, whether you're placing labels at this point or just putting it into its master cases. To start our high pressure processing cycle, the first thing we do is enter our pasteurization method. So I come to my machine and I select my operator number. And then I pick my pasteurization method. This pasteurization method has been programmed for 87,000 PSI, which is equivalent to 600 megapascal, for 180 seconds, which is equivalent to three minutes. We have a 150 liter machine. Our machine holds three of these canisters. It's got an open top for easy loading, and the ends are removable for easy unloading at the other side. Now I'll load a canister with our products. Now we can see that the machine is ready, the product is loaded, the green light is flashing indicating that the cycle is ready to start. We'll press the button, the product gets loaded into the machine. The pressure vessel is moving into place. Once it's in place, the plugs will be placed in and the vessel will start filling with water. On the operator panel, you can track the increase of pressure. See it goes up here and is maintained at 87,000 PSI. Up on the mezzanine, we have intensifier pumps and that is what is maintaining the pressure in the vessel. On this board, we have a lot of information displayed. Here we've got our method number, which is our pasteurization method. We've got the time that we're holding for, which is 180 seconds. This 
this is counted down here. So we're at 95, 94 seconds into the cycle. We've also got our pressure, which we've got at 87,000 PSI, as I'd said. And it shows up here what we're operating at. So we do have a variance above and below that optimal level. We've also got temperature here, which is listed at 42 degrees Fahrenheit, which is at about 5 degrees centigrade. The end of the high pressure processing cycle will be marked with a loud noise. There, you heard the depressurization of the chamber. The cylinder will be moving back into place, the water will be draining, and the product will be moved through. Let's go to the other side and see the product. The pressure releases from the vessel, the water pours out, and the cylinders are pushed through by the next batch of product. So we saw the products that I put into the containers. Let's see what happened after a high pressure process. I selected a variety of products to show different product types as well as different packaging types that can be used in high pressure process. This is my high pressure process juice. This is my non-processed juice. As you can see, there's no difference between the two products. We have salad dressing. Again, another plastic style bottle, but with the geometry, we were able to keep the packaging integrity. So this is my non-processed salad dressing bottle. This is my processed salad dressing bottle. As you can tell, there's no difference. Your main considerations are going to be that the plastic bottle can withstand compression and go back to its original shape without any disformation or discoloration. Also that the labeling can withstand the water and the pressure application. To highlight products that may be inappropriate for high pressure processing, I put a sample in of a styrofoam cup. Styrofoam has a lot of fixed air bubbles. With the high pressure processing, these air bubbles will be crushed and compressed. So coming out of the high pressure, here's our styrofoam cup that has all the air removed. So products like bread with formed air bubbles in it would not be acceptable for high pressure processing. My next product is I've got the two pepperoni types. Got the one in the vacuum package. And as you can see, other than a little bit of moisture, it looks identical. There's no issues with the product. When we do a comparison with vacuum packets, which is considered the ideal packaging type for high pressure processing, you can see there's no discoloration, no difference in the product. Again, you just have to consider the types of film that they're approved for use and that the label is acceptable and can withstand high pressure processing. So the ideal packaging is considered to be vacuum packaging where you won't have this issue. It also improves the efficiency of your machine because as the canisters are more full, you have less water that needs to fill into the pressure rail salt to get the full volume. And uh, that takes less time, so the process is more efficient. And then you also don't have to have any wait time for the gas to dissipate from the surface of the products. So I've got my corned beef product here. Here's my high pressure process point. Again, you can't tell the difference. One of the other bonuses with high pressure processing is if you were to ever have some failed packaging or a leaker, the high pressure processing is going to identify those leakers for you so they won't get out to your consumer. So that is considered another efficiency of the technology. But when we come to the other side, when we look at fresh meats, it's a little bit of a different story. So looking at the chicken breast, you can see there's a color change. It appears to be fully cooked. It is not. It's still raw, but the high pressure causes protein denaturation, which changes the color of the product. So an example of some fruits and vegetables, we have the tomatoes here. I used two different types of packaging. We can see the product suspended in the air was an unsuccessful application of high pressure processing. The pressure was too much for the integrity of the product. The skin broke and moisture leaked from the product. However, when we suspend the product in water, the water keeps a buffer. It's able to be compressed and it allows the product integrity to be remain, or maintained throughout the process. That's the end of our high pressure processing demonstration. Hopefully I've piqued your interest in this technology. If you have any further questions, please contact the Food Processing Development Center.